hello folks and friends. Welcome back to another video. I hope you're doing really, really well. I must admit that this video is quite spontaneous and it was not planned, but it is Friday night and there are a few things happening this weekend slash the next few days that I thought would be fun to put in like make into a little video. So I'm not gonna call this a weekend in my life because it's not following the full weekend, but it's a mishmash of certain events over the course of four days. <laughs> So tonight is Friday night. I'm here with my dumb Eve and we are just over a week away from our dressage clinic and there are certain elements of the dressage test that we need to work on. I'm going to do the ride in the halter with my Western Roper reins just because as she is for sale, I want her to have as many skills as possible and she goes really well in a bit list, but I want to just keep honing those skills because it's been a while since she's done it. And to be honest, I'm just feeling lazy. Sunday is an exciting day because Merlin has the saddle fitter coming, which has been something that he's needed now. About two weeks ago, I decided he was having some saddle fit issues. And then on Monday, I've taken a few hours off of work and Eve and I are joining one of the other girls from the barn on a trail ride. It'll be my first time riding her off property and it'll also be her first trail ride. So it should be a very mishmashy but exciting video so if you're interested in any of the things that I mentioned then watch on. I'm seeing something exciting in that oh, there are jumps set up. So tonight we're gonna do dressage but tomorrow we're gonna jump but we're not doing that tonight and she's looking at them and she's like ooh jumpies. Something tells me we shouldn't do that bitless in a dressage saddle. <laughs> we finished the walk trot portion of our ride and I'm actually so pleased with how it's going. She's so soft and willing. Like she's done some really nice halts as well. I think I might do her just like ride her bitless for the next week. I'll just adjust Merlin's bridle and do the test bitless. And I should mention we're also only doing walk trot because even though her canter is a lot stronger than it used to be, we're still not at a point with our transitions and kind of level of collectedness where I would feel like it would be beneficial. I'd rather focus on the foundational skills that you need for a walk trot test and do it that way. Kind of like I did with Merlin when we did his first DRO test. But I have decided what the hey, the jumps are here. Let's pop over them a couple of times because she's being so good. So I'm gonna canter and then I'll pop over the jump a couple of times and then we'll do a proper jump tomorrow. My God, you guys, she, like <laughs> she just did some of the nicest canter work she's ever done. Her transitions were beautiful. It was probably the nicest right canterly transition I've had with her in a halter with Western barrel reins. And then I put her over that. It was set to a trot distance, which is an exercise that I've been meaning to do for a while because she gets very keen when she jumps and she was so soft and pliable. I think that I spend so much of my mental energy focusing on keeping her at a trot or keeping her pace reasonable that I disrupt her maybe or get in her way. So when I was heading into that pole, I wasn't focused on the jump. I was just focused on getting to the pole. I was counting in my head the rhythm that I wanted in the trot and it, it worked. Like I've been out of jump lessons for a while, so it's easy to forget all these little exercises that really help, but I foresee a lot of trot jumping in our future because she's at a point now where I know she'll jump anything that I point her at. Now it's about refining the technique and getting that adjustability, which I feel like strengthening in the canter is also helping. The difference in how strong she was in the bitless versus the bit is kind of insane. So tomorrow we're gonna try the bitless and see how it goes because like I'm at, like I'm somewhat speechless. Oh my goodness, welcome to Saturday. It is a miserable, cold, wet, rainy, foggy day. I have my boy in because I want to put one of his new blankets on him. Hi, hangry boy. And he wants his feed. it go down your throat any faster. So he's got his full set of winter blankets. We've got a 50, 100, two rain sheets, and a 200. And I wanna put a rain sheet on him today. So he's gotta to come in and dry. One of those days where everything sticks to you. 
Oh my God. Horses, man, I tell you, I am soaked to the bone. My makeup running, because of course I forgot to take my makeup off yesterday before I went to bed. Walking through the muck, covered in dirt. Going to bring Even so that she can drive for like 45 minutes to an hour before I tack her up. And what does she do? But go all the way into the freaking grass field. Brand new, like beautiful big shelter. But do they go in there? No, gotta go out to the grass. And not just in the field either, but like all the way at the back, truly. Hi! But we're still jumping today. That is the goal. So I want her to dry. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna pull you in from your grass. You are wet. Really? All right, enjoy the hay you just made it mess up. I will be back in an hour. Oh, Let's see. That is like a perfect fit. Well, I'm pretty chuffed. I think it fits great. $110, my friends. $110. Handsome. Now, can you try to keep it clean for like at least five minutes? Don't go out there and automatically roll. What are you doing? You have already had an apple and two treats. You don't need any more sugar. Go! <laughs> go out to your friends! Yes! We've got a racehorse turned jumper pony. I've got Merlin's bitless bridle on her because she was so good in the halter last night. I'm gonna do a little warm up and then do some trot jumping. So time for a cheeky voiceover because I think it's quite interesting to examine what happens over the course of this training footage. So as you can see, when we start out, she's quite, um, I don't even want to say tense. She's excited and she sees a stride and she goes for it. And this is what she does when we jump. So after a few times going through it, I decided like every time that I felt her tense or go against the contact going into the fence we just did some circles to re-establish some relaxation and as you can see here it really works and this is exactly the type of exercise that i've been looking for to make her think so what's going to happen next is we're going into the fence she tenses and i just opened my inside rein and kind of loosened my outside rein to just pull her out and go on to a circle now some people might not like this because you're technically pulling the horse out from the fence but because i know that she's going to go over whatever i point her at the main thing for me is to get relaxation going into the fence. So as you can see, she's going in on a fairly nice contact, not like a dressage frame, but just a nice on the bit kind of contact while also keeping my hands as soft as I can. And I found that really focusing on my energy and keeping my energy level and calm really, really helped as well. So as you can see here, she does a couple of times where she canters the pole and canters the jump, which I don't mind. I like, I don't mind that she finds her own stride, I just want her to stay with me when she does it. And when she jumps over the really little jumps, she kind of can jump flat. So here's me pulling her out again, because this had gone up to two six at this point. So I decided to trot her over some somewhat bigger jumps, just to really make her actually lift her front end, use her hind end, engage her core, and actually think about what she's jumping and where she's putting her feet. Now I put it up to 2.9 and my camera or my phone missed the first one, but here we go over the second time. The first time she tapped it, so she was a little exuberant over that second one. And though the need to circle before approaching kind of diminished as we went through the ride, I had to do it less and less. There were still times where she got excited, saw a stride and wanted to take over. So I just popped on a circle and said, nope, let's stay together. And she still added a little canter stride, but this was really good for her to do. Sometimes you have to let them mess up because she kind of learned like, oh, that was really awkward and did a beautiful, careful jump the next time. So after that, I did it one more time and then we finished. And I actually got some nice clips on my nice camera, so I'll let you enjoy those with sound. Oh my freaking god, you guys. No words. So we started at two feet and we ended at two nine. 
which the only other time she's jumped to nine was at the gymnastic. This exercise is really good because it forces her to sit and think about where her feet are going. Like some horses, like when the jumps are smaller and easy, they don't think about it. So you can see in the beginning when we were going through, she was like adding a canter stride in. It was still not the level of focus and care that I wanted. So I put it up to two, three and same thing, two, six and she did two really nice jumps. We put it up to two nine. She respected it so much and like really thought about where she was putting her feet. I felt a couple really nice jumps, so I can't wait to look at the footage. She was so lovely and adjustable in this bit list. She came back to me so much easier. Normally when she gets all excited at jumps, she, I don't want to say like she tanks off after the fences, but she does accelerate her canter every single time she came back to me by the time we were at the corner. So we are going to call it a day for this video today. See you tomorrow. <laughs>
Well done, darling. Good job. Good job. Well done. Very hilly, isn't it? <laughs> Girl. What's going on? Did you put your stuff in my car? What's up? Were you the best girl ever? Were you the best girl ever? Yes, yeah, me. You were. Have a drink, darling. No. She's like, no. Have a drink, he's for me. Yes, if you got treats. For such a wonderful adventure, my girl. So she says, I just want see, I want to go out to my friends. Okay, yes, I'm gonna let you go. Oh my goodness. Hang on. Hang on. There you go. Honestly. She says muddy. Go out to my friends. Oh my goodness. So that was like that was absolutely incredible. Eve was so, so, so good. I'm so proud of her. She led the whole time and there were a few moments where she was a little scared and didn't want to go, but I just put a little bit of leg on, encouraged her forward with my voice, made sure that I didn't have any contact on her face and she went and she seemed to have a lot of fun. So we were out for about like an hour and a half. Now I'm going to tack Merlin up and have a little ride on him outside and hopefully our issues with our saddles are solved. And I'm going to ride him outside because it rained over the weekend so the footing is great and it's beautiful. So why not? Because pretty soon we're going to be stuck inside for the winter. So take advantage of the nice days outside while we can. Needless to say, the blanket no longer looks like new. He's filthy and he has a unicorn horn. <laughs> Lovely burdocks. Yay. I love this for me. Yes, you're so kind to your mummy, aren't you? So we have deburred him and his saddle is on. And I just want to show you where the flocking was taking out on both sides and what the effect of that was. Basically, the gullet is still fine. She just took out some flocking kind of here and down here. And where it was too tight, it was kind of forcing the saddle like up and then the back cantle seat area down, which is putting pressure on his back. So she took out some flocking to give him more room in the shoulder. Gullet is exactly fine. And as you can see, balance of the billets, they're pointing straight down. Haven't tried the jump while well, the jump is the same, but we're gonna ride in the dressage saddle this week because we have a clinic this weekend. So tonight will really be the tell. I'm gonna set my Pivo up. Can't guarantee it's gonna track us the whole time. We'll see if it catches any footage, I'll put it in. And if not, oh well. You guys, I have my horse back. I have my horse back. I feel, I feel like crying to be honest because he hasn't been that forward and willing and happy under saddle in probably like three to four weeks. Like since just after 
our dressage riders online test and that was like september 22nd 23rd when we filmed that so like almost exactly a month <sighs> Listen to your horses. When they start acting out of the blue, listen to them because chances are they're trying to tell you something. I never once thought that he was being bad for the sake of being bad or anything like that. He was so clear in what he was telling me. I would ask him to trot or to canter and he would grunt, stop, and then turn his head back and nose at his saddle exactly where it was pinching. Like, <laughs> He was so clear about what was wrong. Thankfully, I've reached a point in my horsemanship where I listened to him rather than pushing him through it. We found an interim solution for the times that I needed a saddle, like when we went on the trail ride, and all those other times he either had time off or I rode him bareback. So this video has been long enough, so I'm going to leave it here. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a bit mishmashy, but I think there were some really nice things. So if you did enjoy it, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. It really does help me out. Comment down below because I love, 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 love chatting and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more. And until next time, we and Eve hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are. Don't forget to give your horse or pony a hug or a kiss the next time you see them. And we will see you next time. Bye. 10 minutes of trot, one minutes of canter. You have ridden for 42 minutes. And again.